We have been traveling the rich fertile lands of Kenya, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful country, talking to farmers wherever we go. We want to give them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn around their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their families' experiences as they make the changes. Karibu to Shamba Ship Up Safari. Hello and welcome to Shamba Shepherd. We are back here at Rongai, some 40 kilometers from Nakuru town. Remember? Yes, I do remember. We were here to see John and Miriam and help them ship their Shamba. Let's see how they are getting on. Firstly, we must set up this camp. The Shamba Shape Up team came to John and Miriam's farm after their daughter Viola had emailed us asking for advice. Viola knew that her parents, who had helped her through her education and her move to the city, were now struggling on the farm that she had grown up on. Young people tend to, to be lazy when they've gone out working in offices. They tend to hate the dirty job in the shambas. So I would think it's important to help these parents because they're the ones who, who supported us in school, who paid our school fees. Uh, I really think it's, it's very important to come back home and support them financially. Last time we were here, John and Miriam had expert advice from Coopers on the management of their cows which were not producing much milk. With some basic health tips and building a new milking pen and feeding troughs, their future looked much brighter. Also, they took the advice to reduce the size of their herd to allow better management and the farmers loan from KCB Bank they could buy two high milk producing cows. This would mean less cows to manage and a better profit. Now, how have you been getting on? Very well. Very well. Uh -huh. And how are your cows? Very smart now. <laughs> they are giving they are us a good, lot yes. of milk. Yeah. Yes. Are they enjoying the new cattle shed? Yes. yes. They're getting enough water? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> We've been thinking about those cows and how we can even make them better and produce even more milk. Yes. Yes. So that is why we are here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's just about feeding the cows. Yes. So let's go to the cows. This chamber is five acres in size. They have local chickens, maize, and lots of goats. But let us get back to the cows. Shamba Shepap wanted to get the best advice for John and Miriam on feeding their herd so they could produce a high yield of milk. Dr. Ruth Wangeshi from Unga Farm Care is here to help. Now, Doc, as you can see, there's lots of pasture land here and adequate water from the river, but it's still a problem. Yes, we need to, to establish a fodder, specifically napier grass, which is a simple fodder to establish and to maintain, so that we get enough feed to feed the cows, to get enough nutrients for maintenance and to produce milk. So we have an advantage, we have a very big river down here, which is not seasonal. In future, we can buy a small pump to irrigate the nipia grass. Mm -hmm. So with that, we'll be set. Our cows will be full with roughage, so that we can be able to supplement with concentrate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever fed these cows with concentrate? Mm -hmm. So Doc, you're recommending that they alternate their feeding their cows not only from grass, but with other supplements. Exactly. Because John, what, what do you feed your cows? Um, God's grass. God's grass, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're, you're recommending that they, they try to alternate it with a different kind of fodder? Exactly. And mostly napier grass. Napier yes. grass. And considering this area can get dry, when it's dry, yes. we need to get ready for that season. Yes. So we need a sizable portion of land. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, before we can even think about something like syringe, we need the nipia first. Yes. yes. Yeah. So are you, are you, are you ready to have a, a piece of land somewhere where you're going to set aside? We are ready. Fine. To do yeah. that. Good. Good. So what does Unga recommend for the cows to produce more milk? 
Once we get enough fodder, then we do supplementation with dairy meal. Dairy meal is fed to daily cows which are milking, and there's a ratio that we use to feed dairy. We usually say that a cow producing, like, like the way you are doing here, the cow is able to give you five liters of, of milk, mm -hmm. just feeding on this lafage, this grass. Yeah? When a cow is producing more than five liters of milk per day, that cow deserves, deserves supplementation with this ratio. For every two liters produced above five, eh, you supplement with one kilo of dairy meal. Yeah. Get it? Yes. Yeah. Let's go through how we work out the right amount of feed to give your cows. If your cow gives you more than 5 liters of milk per day, for every 2 liters over 5 liters, then you give it 1 kilo of dairy meal per day to supplement the normal fodder. So if your cow starts to produce 7 liters a day, you supplement the fodder with 1 kilogram of dairy meal. If your cow produces 9 liters a day, you supplemented 2 kilograms of dairy meal and so on. We also do challenge feeding. For those cows that have not been feeding on dairy meal, yes. we do challenge feeding, whereby we, we challenge it by giving it more than what we recommend. And when we give that, the cow will respond by producing more milk. When it gives more milk, we continue giving more until when we have a normal a, a stabilization. Yes. Good, so good. you are welcome mm. to come to our factory yes. in Akuru. Mm. We go through those processes. You see how we produce our feed. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much, Doc. Yes. Thank you, thank you. While Tony was talking about the cows, I found something else that needs a shape up. It's really good, John and Miriam have really tried harvesting water. They have a big tank. That's good. The tank is broken and the guttering is really rusty. So that's quite dangerous. So it's time to get Caris. Harvesting rainwater is very important to provide clean water for cooking, washing, and for your animals. Using plastic guttering means there will be no rust, it will last longer, and it's easier to clean. It's time to leave the Shamba and visit an Unga factory which is just up the road in Akuru town. John and Miriam and some other local farmers have come for a tour to find out why quality feed for livestock is so important and how it is produced. Raw materials such as maize, wheat, soya beans and sunflower for Unga farm care animal feeds are grown all over the country and come to Unga factories to be carefully turned into top quality feeds. Let's see how it's done. Once we receive a truck with raw materials, before it is allowed into our stores, we normally take three main checks. We have a visual check to ensure that it's free of infestation, smell, and, and the bagging of the packing material has been done properly. After that, we also do another check, check for aflatoxin. And the third check we normally do is the chemical analysis to ensure that the material has met our specifications in terms of protein and fiber. Aflatoxin is a poison that is made by certain molds and is thought to cause cancer in humans. Unga Farm Care makes sure there are definitely no traces of aflatoxin in their feed. And if all is okay with the three, three mentioned checks, we now allow the material into the quarantine bin, awaiting the, third, the final stage of analysis. Once the material is inside the store, we put it in the quarantine bin, as you can see here, where we hold it for analysis, and it is here that it goes for two main tests, tests for Salmonella and E. coli. After meeting all the specifications, we then transfer the materials to production area through our shoots. And at this point, I'll request all of you to put on your mask because this involves dust and all the other kind of things.
Masi, we have sunflower and uh, cotton. And what else do we have here? We have wheat bran, we have pollard, we have Indian soya, Euro soya, we oh. have other kinds of minerals, premixes. So Basically, many. all that goes into the, into the store, into the production area has to pass through here. So all those are the ingredients? Yes. To all make the good, good quality product? Perfect. All raw materials go through this machine that removes large pieces and it even goes through a magnet to remove any metals. The next step in the material preparation is to make sure it's all checked for size using different screen sizes. For example, all materials for chicks have to be less than 3 millimeters to avoid the chicks choking. The farmers are enjoying learning about Unga Farm Care Feeds. It is important to know that what your animals eat has a direct impact on you as well through milk or meat production. We are halfway through the tour of the Unga factory and it's fascinating. Make sure you join us after the break when we return with more advice right here on Shamba Shepa. Attention farmers, I'm here to talk about a very serious disease. It's not a human disease. It's, it's a maize disease and we'll get a real expert. Now Joshua, I want to know what is going on here because I believe that maize are supposed to be green. I'm not seeing green, I'm seeing spots of yellow, I'm seeing dried leaves. What exactly is this disease? This chamber has been affected by a disease known as maize lethal necrosis disease. This disease is caused by two viruses, uh, which causes the plant to die because they interfere with the, the plant nutrition. And how exactly does the virus affect the maize? They block the, 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 the plant from making food through the leaves and also from taking the, the food from the soil through the roots. And at what particular stage does it affect the maize plant? This virus affects the maize at all stages of growth. It will attack the maize as young as uh, two weeks old, and it will attack the maize that is forming the cob. Mm -hmm. I wish to confirm that if this farmer does not remove this maize from this field, he does not expect any harvest from here, because all the maize will all turn this color here. Okay. Mm. And what are the symptoms of the viruses in the maize? As you can see from this field, the symptoms of the virus is that uh, the maize starts turning yellow, yellow mm -hmm. spots, Mm. And then the spots co any, coalesce to form a complete yellow color of the, of the leaves. Mm -hmm. And then later on, the, maize, uh, the leaves start to dry. Now, is there a solution? Yes, there are several solutions to this problem. What should a farmer do? The farmer, first of all, should plant certified seed. Second, we recommend farmers also to do crop diversification. And third, we, we, we are insisting that farmers should practice closed season where they rotate maize with another crop. There, you've had it. Right here on Shamba Shepa. Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. We are here at Unga Factory in Nakuru. And we are here to show farmers a process of making quality animal feed. Previously on Shamba Shepa, we visited John and Miriam's farm to give expert advice on management of their cows. But just as important is knowing what to feed your livestock for the best effect. Unga Farm Care invited John and Miriam and other local farmers for a tour of their factory and we are halfway through. And now we're just about to go to the master control room. Okay, this is control room where we receive raw materials. This is the point where we do the shooting. The raw material is, is conveyed along this line. We have Experts make up the mixes of feeds and these are controlled here. It may be the adding of molasses and corn oil to various diets or the adding of various vitamins and minerals that have already been mixed. <sighs> Oof. It's like a spaceship. Who knew so much technology went into animal feed? We go back to the factory floor to see the next step, where the final feed product is packed. Finished product is ready, it comes out to, the, to this plant, and here we do the packing. Our packing system is automated, and once we remove at least uh, bags for some time, in every 15 minutes, we, try to, we do sampling of the weighing to ensure that the weights come out in the required specifications. 
This chicken feed sacks should each be 50 kilograms. All feed is weighed on a regular basis to ensure the customer gets exactly what he pays for. Hmm, I wonder what I weigh at the moment. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Must see the finished product go through this conveyor belt, then goes down there, ready for loading and delivery. Yes, that's the final step, and this is our main connection between production and finished goods store. Uh -huh. Once it is there, it is put on stacks, and from there directly into our trucks, ready to be delivered to our farmers. Good, good, yeah. good. I think we can go down and have a look at what happens on the finished goods store. All right. Yes. The finished product is coming. It's coming. It's coming slowly. There it is. There it is. It's been very interesting. Is this the last stop? Now this is our final stage. Here we see our finished goods store. Not only is the factory extremely clean with foot baths and hand washers, but to keep everything safe and clean, the delivery trucks are all disinfected before being loaded to take the feeds to the agrovets all over East Africa. So Miriam and John, I hope you've understood the process of making animal feed. We have learned, we have a, learned lot. a lot. Yes. And I'm hoping now that your cows will be giving you better production of milk. Yes. yes. Now that you know about quality feed. Yes. yes. Good. They will give us more milk. Aha. Good. That was so interesting. I never knew so much work went into making top quality feed. While we were at the Onga factory, back on the Shamba, Karis has been busy putting up new guttering and fixing the tap. Harvesting rainwater is a great way to combat climate change, as it is hard to know when the rains are coming and how much they will be. Nowadays, it's very good to harvest the rainwater when it does come. It is stored for washing, cooking, and for your animals. Another way we can shape this Shamba is an alternative to using expensive and dangerous kerosene lamps. The World Health Organization reports that kerosene lanterns clean the lives of 1.5 million people each year. Miriam, a company called D-Light, has a solution. I've brought you someone with some very, very good news. Yes. I hear you use kerosene for lighting on this farm. I've been using kerosene. Okay. Yes. And how do you find it? It makes my house to, 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 to bring tears. Uh -huh. When I switch it off, I feel not good in my chest. Okay. It is not good. Okay. Yes. And for your children? Ah, it's very bad. Uh, they how... usually cough. Uh, uh, how much do you use? I, use? I just buy only one liter. Okay. Yes. How much does it cost? 100 shillings. Okay. Yes. Where do you get it from? I just take a motorbike to Cambia Moto. Okay. And it costs 200 shillings to go. And 200? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. I'm here to solve some of these problems for you. Yes. Uh, what I have here is a daylight solar lantern, yeah. uh, which charges using energy from the sun. Ah, oh, it's very so good. So you stop going to Cambia Moto yes. to, to get uh, your light. I'm very happy. <clears throat> so what happens? Yes. Uh, this is the light, yes. and you switch it on here. Ah. And it, it charges with energy from the sun. It doesn't use paraffin. <laughs> you no, you won't no. use paraffin it anymore. Doesn't. It uses the rays from the sun. Ah. So it comes with a solar panel, yeah. which uh, you put this one in the sun. Yes. And then it has a long wire. So you leave this in the sun, Yes. and then you connect this to the light here. And you just leave it the whole day, yeah. and in the evening when you come, you can use the light. So you don't have to use a kerosene anymore. It takes how long? It can give you up to 12 hours of ah. light. And the other thing is, it can also charge your phone. Even a phone? Yes. Uh -huh. So I'll, I'll show you how to charge your phone. It comes with uh, many adapters. Yes. 
Um, so what you do, the same place where you put the solar panel, mm -hmm. there's this adapter that you put in here. Yes. You put this side, and the other side you put in the phone. So where do you charge the phone? Here. From here. Yes. So once you put it here, mm. you can see yeah. it's charging. Yeah. yeah. It's charging. So you don't have to go anywhere to charge your phone or to uh -huh. buy kerosene anymore. You have brought me far. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy. I will not use a motorbike. No, 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 no motorbike. Charging a D-Light in the sun is simple. Using a D-Light is not only better for your health and saves you money in the long run, it is also totally safe when children are around. It is portable and can be used outside as well as inside and can survive tough conditions like rain, heat, and dust. <laughs> we can't forget that Dr. Ruth from Unga also advised that Miriam and John should plant napier grass and so the cows can have good fodder all year round. So John and Miriam, I can see that you're being very busy and you have followed Dr. Ruth's advice and prepared land to plant napier grass to give you fodder for your cows. Yes. Now, what next? We have napier here. And we have fertilizer here, but, but we don't we know don't how, how, to plant how to plant it. That's why we have Jen here who will help you in planting the napier grass. Now that we have uh, napier seedlings here, these are the cuttings. And then you have your fertilizer, this one. And for every cutting has to get 10 grams of the fertilizer. Jen recommends DAP fertilizer that is available in agrovets. Also for the best growing results, she also recommends planting with farmyard manure. And there is certainly plenty of that on this shamba. So how do they measure 10 grams of fertilizer? When we are in the farms and sometimes we don't have these machines to weigh, you can use a bottle top mm -hmm. like this one. This is from a soda. So, this is about 10 grams, which is supposed to be used in one cutting of napier grass. In every hole you put 10 grams and then you mix with soil so that it doesn't scorch the plant. And uh, the spacing of the, of the napier grass is supposed to be one meter, one meter, which is this, and from plant to plant, you we have two feet. Two so one feet. meter, and then plant to plant two feet. Yes, or 60 centimeters. Uh -huh. yes. yes, yes. Good, yeah. good. Well, we have the field ready and we've got everything we need here, so let's go and do it practically. Following these instructions will produce a good crop of napier. Dig your holes with a suggested spacing of two feet apart. Add 10 grams or one cup full of fertilizer and mix with soil. Add a handful of farmyard manure or compost. Plant your napier stem at an angle with two nodes lengths in the soil and one node length out of the soil. Cover the base with soil. Remember the spacing. Each row is one meter apart. That's three feet. And each plant is 60 centimeters apart. Napier is a fast growing, deeply rooted perennial grass. It is easy to establish, persistent, and drought tolerant. The first cutting is expected three to four months after planting when at one meter high. Thank you for your advice. I've learned a lot now, and now I'm going to use the water from the river to make irrigation here, so that to, to get enough uh, food for my, my, my cows. Wow, that's a nice way forward. Yes. Yeah. You'll never miss fodder. Yes. You'll never miss any feed 
for your animals throughout the year yes. because this this liver is permanent. Yes. So yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you. Remember to use resources you already have on your shamba. John can utilize a piece of land to plant his napier grass and that will give a big return in fodder for his cows. He is also lucky to have a river nearby that he will eventually be able to use to irrigate his new Napier field. John and Miriam are now growing good fodder which will provide the cows with roughage. They also have the dairy meal from Unga Farm Care which is especially for adult milking cows and has been formulated in the factory to meet nutrient requirements for milk production. The benefits will soon show. A higher quality of milk means more profit. We've learned so much, and you too can learn a lot, right here on Shamba Shepherd.